Good afternoon, Mountaineer football fans. We are live. My name is Mountaineer Paul, and this is another edition of Mountaineer Paul Talks Football. Thank you guys for being in the house this afternoon as we talk some awesome football news, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, don't know how much traction it's going to get on Saturday while the NCAA tournament is going on in various places, but got to get the news out before it's too late. The draft is coming quick. And what a week it was for Beanie Bishop. Talking about a guy that was definitely snubbed uh, uh, out of the, out of the combine. I think most people realize that. Uh, talking about a guy that was an All American, uh, certainly deserving of a combine invite. Uh, it blows my mind that the kid didn't get a combine invite. But guess what? He who last, most definitely last. Let's see. Here we go from Mountaineer Sports now, or Mountaineers now. Apologies from Skylar Callahan. I believe it's, it's right. it was all West Virginia's being Bishop was on the show. Consensus All American cornerback Beanie Bishop was not invited to the Reese Senior Bowl nor the NFL Combine. But once he got his opportunity to put his talents and skill set on display at the Big 12 Pro Day in front of scouts representing all 32 teams, he showed out. Bishop had the fastest EST 40 time of any player who participated. Let me repeat that. Bishop had the fastest 40 time of any player who participated. Out of the entire Big 12 that went, not just from West Virginia, but just at his position, not just at his position, but anyone, a 439, which is blazing fast in any year, and in some years would have been the fastest, and a 415 20-yard shuttle time, which is almost as impressive, guys. That was ranked fourth among everybody there. Went a long way to increase his draft stock. Because of his size, 5'10", 183, primarily playing in zone coverage during his low career in West Virginia, there's a lot of concern for Bolts at the next level about how he will adapt when asked to play more than more than man coverage, specifically press man. The one thing that bodes well in Bishop's favor is he has the uncanny ability, the uncanny knack for playing the ball in flight, irrespective to the type of coverage he's in. Led the country to 24 passes defended, five more than anyone else, to go along with four interceptions. Apparently, Bishop is viewed as a late day three pick. Who could go and draft? Pretty impressive stuff. Um, let's see, let's get the comments here really quick. We got we got Sima. Hey, what's up, bro? Gang, gang. Uh, you know, on this subject here, and I don't play for this to be an exceptionally long line, but. Gets me how to have to edit the video. Maybe just a little laziness in there. Um, you know, I've been going hard on the basketball side, as you guys know, here the last few days, talking about all the football, all the basketball stuff that there is to talk about that I've neglected this channel, my biggest channel, uh, the one that really is a breadwinner for me. But the basketball channel has turned into a powerhouse lately, guys. So if you're not a part of Hoops from the Hills, I advise you get over there. You know, me and Coons. I've done pretty well over there. We had new head coach Darren DeVries, his brother, Jared DeVries, on there yesterday. Uh, and very proud of that. You know, we had Jay Coops on, former director of player personnel, uh, on the day before that. So we've had a lot going on in the Hoops channel, Hoops from the Hills. Just type that in, it'll show up. Back to the football. Beanie Bishop is a guy that I understand the zone coverage aspect of this. And, and he does have deficiencies in, in man coverage. It, it's one of the reasons the plays up with such a good core. I, I think that the Bishop's true position is probably going to be in, in one of the safety positions. He's a good tackler. I, I think there, there's a good chance he can play in the boundary somewhere uh, or, or even deep. You know, he's got the long speed to play deep. Uh, he's got the ball flight tracking skills to play deep. It's really, you know, and the thing is, is, in a day and age where length is valued almost above speed, uh, because 
at the end of the day, you can't get leverage on somebody that you can't latch on to. Uh, and so whether that be in the run, run game and the you know, defensive side of things or even in pass coverage when a receiver, it's all about who gets their hand where first, wall somebody off, and I've got my hand on you, you can't reach me. I've got the leverage and the ability to pull up and catch that thing before you do. So leverage it plays a huge factor in football today because a lot of them has a lot to do with some of the rule changes too. And I, I think that has a lot to do with it. Personally, I think maybe he's just a ball. And I think if you put him on a field somewhere, don't forget his return skills either. He can't do that. Is he elite at it? I wouldn't say elite, but he certainly can do it and be something beneficial, especially maybe in a reserve role or an NFL team, uh, or maybe as the second guy beside the main return. Um, he can certainly play up on the return team as well. So uh, there's, and especially on kickoff, a guy that's got 14 yard speed. You're talking about a guy that just wants to make a roster, maybe not be a starter for the NFL. I'm not saying he can't start, but I'm just talking about Beanie Bishop's going to make a team. He run that 4 3 9. While 40 speed isn't really, it's been shown more and more not to exactly track when it comes to how good a football player you're going to be. It's one part of it. The 20 yard is a big part of it. And certainly he was able to show some people some things with that. He's got short range of explode, area of explosion. Uh, and he's got long speed, long, you know, well, football speed, not really long speed anywhere else. So I think Benny's going to make a roster. Maybe as a free agent, uh, he may get drafted late. You know, uh, had he been able to go to the combine and show that off, likely he sneaks in the later rounds, fifth, sixth, seventh, maybe fourth. But at this point, I, I don't know how often it happens, if at all, for a player to not get invited to the senior bowl and the combine, but to get drafted. I'd like to ask somebody about that. Maybe I can pose that question to somebody. Uh, because it's something like, almost like you wouldn't even expect that not to happen very often. If at all. So I'd like to know, does Mini even have a chance to get drafted since he didn't go to the combine or the senior bowl? Because if that's the case, you should go now. <laughs> so, Before we go any further, guys, got to give a shout out to Dutch Miller, the sponsor for the channel. So, break for 30 seconds for. This episode of Not Gonna Fall Off Football is brought to you by Dutch Miller Automotive, where friends and family pricing means you get the best deal right up front on a new or free love vehicle in stock every time. With brands like Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Kia, Hyundai, Ford, GMC, Buick, and Subaru. The Dutch Miller Automotive family is always growing and ready to put you in the car or truck you've been searching for. Check out our inventory across West Virginia at DutchMillerAuto.com or you can come in today to the home of friends and family prices. Only at a Dutch Miller Automotive store. There you go. All right, guys. So I got that down, though. <laughs> What's up, Michael Dayhart? I requested the 365 Sports Crew to interview Beanie while he was at the Big 12 Combine. Paul Catalina set it up, and in my honest opinion, Beanie was fantastic in the interview. I hope he is drafted. Hey, Mom. <laughs> my mom's here. Um, yeah, thank you. I love you. See you later. Um, my mom had to drop me something off, guys, so apologies. Um, That's cool, Michael. Um, I hope he's drafted too. Like I said, good players all the time. It's not the end for Beanie. I'm sure it's probably put an extra chip or two on his shoulder. Uh, and certainly is going to motivate him, right? So I won't be shocked if Beanie doesn't not only do well. In camp, whichever, wherever he goes, but I think he, he's going to eventually make a roster uh, and, and play well. You know, I really do believe that. So good for beating. What, what's up, Tyler Cobb? Thanks for showing up, brother. 
Is anybody on the here on my live right now? I know there's only 29 of you, and I'm not was expecting a bunch on a random Saturday. That nothing really going on. Uh, and I haven't, excuse me, had a chance for, to promote this. But uh, is anybody here not subscribed to the Hoops Hills channel? I'm just curious. If you're not, please get over there and do that sometime today. That that channel right there is really doing some things, and there's a lot more to come if you follow about your basketball heavily. I, I really, I'm so excited about the future for that channel, guys. I really am. Um, and I'm a basketball junkie. I really am a love it. Uh, it's secondary to football for me, but not by much. <laughs> like it's, it's. I'll say it like this: it's college football, and then college basketball is my second favorite thing over the NFL. If that makes some sense. So. Uh, it's definitely up there for me as far as sports. Tyler, I, you know, it, it really depends on the way I get paid. Uh, and I don't mean to divulge my personal life, but it just depends on if I get paid before then or not, because we, we have a sponsor that pays us for this channel, and then obviously what we make on the channel, or what I make for this channel with the other channel. Um, they all come at different times, but if the sponsored money comes through before, then yes. Videos come through fine, but your sound and voice is being up and down to sound as clear as your other videos. Does everybody else agree with that? I'm having a lot of trouble with these headphones, guys. They're wireless. Um, they're completely charged. I just charged them. But is anybody else experiencing that? Because it tells me nothing on this side. I would like to know because that, that sucks, unfortunately. That'll kill a video. I mean, this video, I might as well not even record it. It sounds dumb because and what sucks is over modulation. Well, That sucks. Well, I'm sorry, guys. Just hang in there with me for a few more minutes. And we'll... There's nothing I can do about it because there's nobody on here with me. Uh, so if I leave, it'll shut off the video. So, uh, I, I, I can take the headphones off, uh, but that would disconnect me from the Bluetooth. It, it would sound like everyone would be making echo, you know. I mean, you would probably be able to hear me, but uh, let me try without the headphones. If you guys think it would be better, if you guys think it'd be better. I can take the headphones off. And it'll be, it'll just be going into the microphone uh, or into the cell phone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, <can't> do <laughs> that's funny. Uh, Michael Weintraub said, I watched the interview with Beanie. He thought it was successful. I thought it was awesome. Beanie really impressed me, and I truly hope he succeeds at the next level. Me too, Michelle. Me too. Tyler said, it's not bad. It's not too bad. It's just a little spotchy. So, I've got a, you know, I've got a microphone. I probably forgot all about that. I'll remember for the next video I do my, by myself, guys. I I just I've been doing so many videos of coups that uh, for whatever reason, if I use a microphone, it won't let me hear what he's saying. Um, probably because they're plugs in the port on the phone. So at the end of the day, I just need to buy a computer. <laughs> but when you when you you can't afford one, it's kind of hard, you know. So um, I'll get there, you know. You guys know me. I, I'm uh, I'm an open book about probably too much of my life, but I, I, I'm not, it's not something I'm embarrassed of. So it's all good. Uh, one other thing we need to get to, guys, is obviously the uh, Zach Frazier part of this. Um, Zach Frazier is one of the best players in this draft. I think we do that. But there was a question, you know, whether or not he was going to be like first, second, third round material and it's only gone up this trajectory has really gone up 
and and there's a couple things. That's why I put him on the thumbnail predominantly, uh, because I really think Zach. Yes, yeah, we are, Michelle. Uh, we're doing really well over on the basketball gym. Uh, but 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 Zach Frazier is being tied to everybody, especially Pittsburgh. There, there's a lot. A lot of people think he won't get past the twentieth pick. Uh, it seems like there's a consensus that the Oregon center is better than him. And I've watched tape, and he's just bigger. You know, he's longer. If Zach Frazier had the same measurables as him, it wouldn't even be a question. But they're two different kinds of players, no doubt. And Jackson Powers is a much more what you would call a modern center in that he's big, he's long, and athletic. Zach is athletic. But he's your typical, more along the lines of what you get 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, centers in, in the past could have shorter arms because they weren't asked to do certain things. Uh, Zach's arms, his arms length. Uh, well, let me just try to take the head through. All right, you guys tell me how it sounds now. Is that better or worse? Wait for somebody to tell me. It's better. <laughs> of course. Go spend a hundred dollars on headphones and uh and it's and it's and it's worse with them. That's the way it goes. So, uh, talking about what was I talking about? Zach Frazier, his arm length. Unfortunately, with Frazier, it's his arm length that gets him in trouble. Um, with some some scouts, they think he just, for whatever reason, what what, and it does show up on tape sometimes. Like I was saying earlier, when you try to attach to somebody, obviously he's got really strong hands, and if Zach Frazier gets his hands on you, you're going for a ride. But if somebody can get their hands on him before he can get his hands on them, they usually gain leverage over him. And he's so strong, he can make up for it with some players. But the elite guys, y'all, at the NFL level will, will dominate Zach if he's not able to get the correct technique. And that's why he worked on technique so hard. Uh, because he, he's physically gifted, but he doesn't have the length. So let's get into an article about Zach, and, and he's still going to be. And there are guys in the NFL level that do it with short arms. It can be done. Uh, Kelsey's an example of that. Uh, you know, there's a few other examples of that in the past. The kid from Wisconsin a few years, like 10, 15 years ago, did it. Uh, I know that's an odd one to bring up, but uh, Zach Frazier's three best NFL draft picks. West Virginia center Zach Frazier is in contention to be an early round pick in the 2024 draft. Frazier carries plug and play starting potential as a blocker who displays terrific strength and leverage. Frazier easily displaces defenders in the run game, but he suffered a serious leg injury in the regular season finale against Baylor. The Mountaineers standout miraculously covered to partake in bench press and positional drills at the NFL Combine. And he plans to be 100% before OTAs. He will immediately improve an NFL offensive line. The Fairmont native could hear his name called within the opening 32 selections. And we've identified three ideal team fits for Frazier. Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys are almost certainly going to dread to draft an offensive lineman in the first round with the 24th pick. They've lost two starting caliber players to free agency. Starting center Tyler Bott. Beatus, I'm not exactly sure how he says that last name, guys. I'm, I'm, I never, I always mispronounce it. Uh, signed with the NFC rival Washington Commanders and let Tyron Smith tackle with Tyron Smith, join Aaron Rodgers and the New York Jets. I expect the Cowboys to prioritize the tackle. Wouldn't be stunned if they possess a top 32 grade on Frazier. The inexperienced Brock Hoffman is currently penciled in the starting role. 
Hoffman delivered last cluster results through 156 snaps at the position last season. I can also see the Cowboys doubling down by drafting another offensive lineman at 56. If Frazier remains available, the Jones family would sprint to the podium, assuming they don't pick him at 24. The Steelers have made sweeping change in Pittsburgh Steelers to the offense this summer. The added Russell Wilson, the quarterback, and part of ways with Kenny Pickett. Thank God. Mason Rudolph and wide receiver Deontay Johnson. They also cut former starting tackle Chuba Okafor. Chukubwa Okafor. With Arthur Smith hired as an offensive coordinator, general manager Mark Kahn needs to add a center that's capable of overseeing the new install. Frazier is that kind of player. Last year's starting center was Mason Cole, who struggled mightily as a run blocker. Cole is still an unrestricted free, unrestricted free agent and isn't being welcomed back to Pittsburgh. Is a utility interior lineman, Nate Herbig, is just slated to play center. The Steelers can, can do better than Herbig, who's a more natural fit at guard. Picking Frazier at 20 or 51 would solve that problem. And lastly, Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals general manager Monty Ozenford is entering the 24 draft with a wealth of resources at his disposal. Ozenford owns 11 total selection, seven of which are scheduled within the opening 104 picks. He possesses outstanding opportunities to retool the offense. Ozenford's efforts should begin with drafting Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors, top 10. Franchise quarterback Kyler Murley deserves good support across the entire offense. And Froholt is a league average starting center who's entering a contract year. Look for a trade happy Austin for to use his draft capital to move around the board as he sees fit. Number 27 or 35 should be reserved for a starting caliber center like Frazier, a la Frazier. Let the rebuilding Cardinals are on the rise. So. Zach's got a lot of options. <laughs> Here we go. I'm sorry. I just seen this, Michael, Michelle, Michael. Here's a little help with earphones and payday. <laughs> I'll add a little more to help out. Man, look, I appreciate it. I really do. Uh, I'm sorry about the sound, y'all. It's embarrassing. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't have the ability to check my sound against myself. So, uh, I usually need coups, you know, to do that. It's really the only way I can. Um, I'm going to have to have some more options in the future for that because it would be different if these Bluetooth headphones would connect while I was on. The name of this website is called, or this, this app that I've used to pay for, it's called StreamYard. Uh, it would be easy if, you know, were able to do that, you know, but it won't let me connect and reconnect Bluetooth, unfortunately. So it is what it is. It's just what it's a it's kind of a headache, but uh, at the end of the day, that's what we can't work out. That is better, Michelle. That's why I was saying Michael, Michelle, Michael, Michelle, because your name's right beside you. Uh, so with Zach Frazier, you know, He's got a lot of options, y'all, and, and, and he's going to get picked. Probably, it's probably going to be a first round pick. And wow, what a story! You know, I'm glad the leg was a clean break, if you will, uh, rather than what it looked like that day. You know, because I, I thought it was going to be a knee at the time, and I was like, oh my god, on the last play. Unbelievable, but thank God it wasn't it, it, the, the play that what happened afterwards, the crawling off the field, that becoming a uh, almost a cinematic moment via the, the social media department of West Virginia University of Football uh, really helped uh, shoot Zach up. You know, a lot of people love that story, and I think it only helped his draft stock. Jacob Yoho, one of my Regular says, uh, time for you to get a studio like three guys. Yeah, I would love to. The problem is, Coos obviously has a full time job, and you know, it's 
it's one of those things where he would have to quit his job for us to do that. Uh, I could certainly do it on my own, no doubt. And I have thought about it. Um, I, I have a couple options that I could try. I've even thought about getting, uh, you know, an outbuilding and fitting it out to be a little studio. So there's a couple options out there for me. Uh, uh, even just doing one here in this room, uh, you know, just getting the requisite equipment. There's only a few things you need to do, really. Uh, soundproofing it, different things like that. Uh, getting the, but it, you know, it costs some money to do. Uh, and right now, uh, you know, things are just so expensive, guys. It really is. But uh, there will be a time probably this next football season of working on a couple more sponsorships. If these sponsorships land, uh, best believe that I'll be able to afford that. So I've had a couple people reach out to me for sponsorships. Just have been a fit. Dutch Mill has really been awesome. Truthfully, they have. They've been awesome. So I, I appreciate that, you know. And, and I appreciate that too. I really do. I, I hate asking. It's hard to ask. 499 Super Chat from Shaggy, West Virginia. He said, I appreciate the great content. You and Coos are the best WB content creators on YouTube, but let's go. That uh, means a lot, man. Uh, you know, when I was 18, did I think that's what I would set out to be? No. But I worked my ass off to get here. You know, the first year of being a content creator, uh, and that's if things are going well, is you get zero, no money, you know? Uh, I wasn't doing it for money. Though. I was doing it for love uh, of this of the state, of this team, and now of you guys too. I feel obligated, you know, and, and not in a bad way to present you guys with good content if I can. Not always great. Sometimes we just got to talk, get on and shoot shit with each other, but uh, I've learned that it's more about, you know, I'm able to kind of use this platform a little bit to talk about my story too, which is important to me uh being in recovery is important to me uh staying staying uh, on top of that and, and sharing my story with uh, people that are still maybe needing help so uh, whether that be here on this channel here or another and i've thought about starting another channel for it uh but it's such a time commitment that and i would feel bad for getting paid for it you know so uh, to start a channel about my, about recovery and, and helping people that turn around and get paid for it, it's kind of, I don't know. It's something I'd have to think about. But but I certainly love doing it and certainly love this channel. So anyway, I appreciate you. You know me, I go off of my rambling sometimes. But, uh, I love doing this, man. So it's, it's been a great commitment. It really has. Back to Frazier, though. Uh, <laughs> Frazier will be like Hoppy <laughs> or Coos will be like Hoppy that's funny uh, you know I, I really do think and you've heard other people say it I think Zach Frazier is going to be a starter for 10 years in the league I really do uh, I, I've never seen anybody quite like him and you know from a humility perspective from a talent perspective, perspective, and, and then also from uh, us uh, an IQ perspective, you look at some of the decisions he makes on the fly, on the field, on tape. Uh, some of the things he's able to pick up on the fly, on the field, on tape. The way he's been able to change. You got to think how many different offenses he's been asked to run since he's been at West Virginia. It's wild, guys. He had to learn and unlearn Dana Holgerson. He had to learn and unlearn uh, Neil Brown or, you know, Graham Harrell to Neil Brown's old offense with Deggie back to the new offense with well, basically what they run, run now with Garrett. It's all a little bit different. Yes, it's all similar, too, but it's all different. So he's had, and he's been the stalwart through it all. So. Zach will be a great in the NFL. It's going to be different probably because he's going to be doing uh, – I think Arthur Smith runs a West Coast-style offense. 
Uh, he certainly put up a lot of points there in Atlanta with that Super Bowl team with the Falcons. Uh, if he goes to the Steelers, that would be a, probably a good fit for him because they do. I think they do the, the little zone running against the blocking scheme there. Different things. Michael Dayhart says, you and Coos do a great job. I've always tried to support our West Virginia homegrown talent. Being one of us, you bleed gold, old gold blue like we do. That's damn straight, man. You ain't lying about that. You know, it was handed down to me from my dad. Uh, so, you know, I always have that for sure. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like, uh, subscribe. Oh, let me find it. <laughs> Usually I'm going to find it pretty quick. Don't forget to like the video on this episode. Uh, there's 53 of you guys in here. If you guys all bounce out on your way out of here and hit that like button, it would be a ton to me. Uh, don't forget to drop a comment below about how you feel about the two players involved here. Uh, where do you think Beanie's going to go to the draft? Will he get drafted? Where will he get drafted? What about Zach? Do you think he'll get drafted? Which Where Where do you think he'll go? Uh, and, and then make some predictions of their career. Do you think they'll be good, bad? Love to know. And last but not least, if you're not subscribed to the channel, we want you to do that. We want you to be a part of this, whether you're a West Virginia fan or not. Uh, at the end of the day, you're all family members to me, and, and I appreciate you. I really do. So, hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. I'm going to bounce, watch some basketball, maybe play a few video games today and Saturday. Uh, hope you enjoy your weekend, guys. And hopefully, we get some news on the transfer front for football soon. Uh, basketball, talking and heavy right now, guys. Uh, I've got some videos planned probably for later tonight, if not tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. I might take Saturday off for the rest of the day. But uh, real quick, on the basketball front, there are two big-time transfers in the portal right now that both have West Virginia on their radar. One average of 21 points a game, and it's a guard. The other is 6'8 wing player that's an elite defender that averaged right around 11 from, I from UIC Chicago named to Toby O'Connor. So go check those guys out. The other kid is Sears from UT Park. Uh, those are two players I need to study up on and probably will be doing that over the next few hours as well. So lots to do for me. Uh, hope you hope you enjoyed the channel today, guys. And wish me luck on this study. That's all I got for today, guys. Let's see what these last few comments say. You should kill my bracket too, bro. <laughs> Mine too. Later, taters. Y'all have a good one. I'm out. Don't forget to like the video on your way out.